Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to learn about another variance reduction technique, which is called geometry splitting. The geometry splitting uh, is a pretty common variance reduction technique, which can be used to attract neutrons into a specific part of the system. So you can use this technique to improve the precision of the computed uh, uh, response of some detector a small detector that you place some, somewhere in the system. The geometry splitting technique is a typical variance reduction technique that can improve the efficiency of the simulation for an exchange of some uh, information about the system. Now, the information that is needed here relates to the importance of uh, different parts in the system. That is, different parts in the system are going to contribute differently to the result. So if your result is a response of a small detector, let me draw a big system with a small detector in the corner here. So let's say that uh, we have a neutron history that starts on the other side of the system here. It has the direction here, for instance. And we know that uh, the neutron history that starts at this place is not very likely to contribute to our result, which is the response of this small detector. It's very unlikely that the neutron would penetrate through the whole system and be captured in the detector. Such a neutron history is more likely to end up outside of the system, for instance. So. This part of the system is not going to be very important to us, right? On the contrary, if you start a neutron history close to the detector, for instance here, it's much more likely that the neutron may scatter inside the volume of the detector. So, for instance, this part of the system is, is going to be much more important to us. So uh, the geometry splitting technique actually requires that you partition the whole system and you assign uh, different importance to different parts in the system. And the value of the importance simply expresses the likeliness that the neutron histories in that part of the system uh, contribute to the result. Now we may expect that those locations which are closer to the detector uh, may be more important. So we may assign bigger importance numbers to these uh, locations, right? The locations which are further away may be less important. Nevertheless, uh, this is not always true. For instance, you may imagine that uh, we can introduce some uh, absorbing uh, material in the system. Uh, for instance, material which is shaped like this. So the neutrons that will enter this material will be absorbed. So all those uh, neutrons that are coming from this side they will be just uh, absorbed and the neutron histories will be terminated there. So clearly this uh, location here is less important than the location which is for instance here. Even though it is more uh, further from the detector, this location is more important because the neutrons that uh, enter into this location are more likely to end up in the detector rather than uh, those neutrons which are here. So let me explain the basic idea of the geometry splitting technique. Let's take the example of this simple system with a small detector in the corner and I'm going to partition the system into three parts. And I'm going to assign uh, the importance value to every part. So uh, the 
part which is in the furthest away from the detector should have the smallest importance. So let's assign the importance uh, value 1 to it. Uh, the middle segment should be of higher importance. So let's assign the value for instance uh, 3 to it. And the last segment is the most important one. So let's assign the importance uh, 9 to it. So here is how the method works. When a neutron is entering from a lower importance part of the system into a uh, higher important part, for instance here, from uh, this region into this region, then the method is going to split the neutron into a number of neutrons and it's going to lower the weight to the new neutrons. So let's uh, uh, denote a neutron history. For instance, a neutron is scattering in this first part and now it's entering into the new part of the system with uh, three times higher importance. So the method will actually, at this point, uh, introduce three new neutrons with the same uh, direction and energy as the old neutron. And the only difference will be they will be assigned a smaller weight. So if we have three new neutrons, they will get uh, one third of the original weight. So there will be one neutron history that may uh, have a collision uh, here. Another neutron history will, uh, with the same direction, uh, collide someplace else. And another neutron may collide, for instance, here. So from this point they will start uh, different neutron histories. Some of them may come back, for instance. Some of them may uh, penetrate into another part. Uh, for instance, this one with the largest importance. So again, when that happens, the number of neutrons is going to be uh, increased uh, three times because the neutron is now entering again a segment in the system which has uh, three times as high importance and the, as the previous one. So again, then the neutron histories will be split into three independent neutron histories. So uh, some of these histories may end up in the volume of the detector. Now those neutrons which are traveling from uh, more important uh, segments into segments with a lower importance, like the neutron history here, they'll be in a different situation. So actually we will want to uh, terminate some of these histories because we want to simulate smaller number of neutrons in the parts of the systems which are uh, uh, less important. So uh, what we can do, we can apply the Russian roulette rule on uh, these uh, histories. So the fate will be decided by the, by the Russian roulette rule. So some of these histories will be terminated and those histories which will survive, we can increase the statistical weight to these uh, neutron histories. So from this idea you can see that for the geometry splitting method it's the ratio of the importance between the different parts of the system which is really uh, important here. Uh, the absolute values of these importance numbers are actually not important. So you could, for instance, uh, divide all these numbers by the same factor and the method would work just the same because the ratios of these importance numbers would uh, not be affected by this. So now let's try to figure out the details. Uh, so let's take the case when we have uh, two regions. So this is the uh, boundary between the two regions. The first region has the importance I1, which is equal, for instance, to 1. And the second region has the importance I2. And uh, I assigned an importance 
2.1 to it. So the importance number doesn't have to be an integer number, it can be any real positive number. Let's have a look at the example of a neutron history which is passing from the first region into the second one. So it's trying to pass into a more important part of the system. So we have to decide how many neutrons we will uh, simulate at this point. So the ratio of the importance numbers uh, I2 divided by I1, so we can call this uh, R. In this case R is 2.1. So uh, on average we want to split this neutron into 2.1 neutrons. Now we cannot simulate 2.1 neutrons, we can either simulate 2 or uh, 3 neutrons. So in this case we can see that we should uh, in 90% cases simulate uh, two neutron histories and in 10% of the cases we should uh, split the uh, neutron into three. So uh, we are going to simulate uh, two neutron histories in 90% uh, of the cases and uh, three neutrons in 10%. So formally you can avoid this uh, probability quite easily. You have to uh, find out the uh, largest integer number which is smaller than uh, this ratio. So in this case that's uh, the number 2. So we can denote it as the number n. So that's this number. And then you calculate the probability as r minus n. So that is 0.1 in this case. So this probability is now assigned to the case when we want to simulate uh, three neutrons and the uh, case when we simulate only two neutrons has the probability 1 minus p. Yeah? Now let's have a look at the case when the neutron is passing from the other side, from the more important region into the less important region. So in this case the ratio is I1 divided by I2, uh, which in this case is 1 over 2.1 and that's approximately 0.476. So we apply the Russian roulette rule and we are going to kill the neutron with the probability 1 minus r. So uh, on this particular case uh, it's more likely that the neutron will be terminated at this uh, boundary. And if the neutron survives then uh, we just uh, increase the weight of the surviving neutron by the factor 1 over r. So here the method is described for you. Every time the neutron is passing between the boundaries of uh, different parts of the system with different uh, importance, we need to evaluate the importance uh, ratio. If the ratio is bigger than 1, it means that the uh, neutron is passing into part of the system which has a higher importance than the previous part. Uh, if the ratio is smaller than 1, then the, the neutron is passing into a part of the system which has uh, a smaller importance. So when the R value is bigger than 1 and it is moreover an integer number, uh, then it's easy. So for instance, if this ratio is uh, 5, then we simply split the original neutron into five new neutrons. We assign the same direction and energy to each of the five uh, neutron histories. And we lower the statistical weight to each of these uh, uh, histories uh, five times. If the R value is not an integer number, uh, for instance, uh, it has a value 5.5, .5, then we either simulate six uh, neutron histories or five. And the probability with which we choose uh, 
the higher number of uh, neutron histories is equal to this uh, uh, r minus n value, where n is the uh, largest uh, integer value smaller than r. So in this case, uh, the probability would be 5.5 minus 5, so that would be 0 0.5. So if probability 50%, we would we would split the original neutron into six six new neutrons. And we would lower the, the weight of each of the neutron six times. And with probability 1 minus p, so in our case that would be also 50%, the original neutron will be split into n neutrons. So that's five neutrons. And we need to divide their statistical weight five times as well. When the r value is smaller than one, that in this case, then the neutron is entering a part of the system which is of lower importance than the part of the system from which the neutron is entering. So we want to kill some of the neutron histories. We will kill them with the probability 1 minus r. So when r is very close to 1, uh, that means that the ratio of the importance of the, uh, of the two parts of the system are pretty close to each other. So uh, the neutron histories will then be killed with very small probability, right? Now, if the neutron history is not terminated, then the weight has to be multiplied by the 1 over r uh, factor, so that uh, we compensate for those uh, neutron histories that we terminate. There are some uh, general recommendations uh, that you can uh, follow for setting up the importance values to different uh, regions in the system. One of these recommendations is here. It says that the importance of the neighboring regions should not differ more than about four times. So if you have a system uh, that has uh, locations of uh, really very diverse uh, importance, then you need to introduce uh, more regions so that the importance in the neighboring regions doesn't differ that much. And it's also uh, a good idea to control the volumes of the regions in such a way that the number of the neutrons is about equal in all regions. So as you can see, the geometry splitting technique is fairly simple and uh, it has been implemented into a number of uh, Monte Carlo codes. You can, for instance, find it in uh, the MCMP code in which uh, it is used by default. So uh, when you build up the input file, you actually need to decide the importance of different cells that you design. And the splitting technique may not be applied only to the geometry, but also to the energy and angular dependence. So, for instance, you can partition the whole energy uh, interval into a number of uh, intervals and assign different importance to these different energy intervals. So, once the neutron uh, undergoes a collision and its energy is uh, changed, it may enter uh, an energy interval which is of higher importance than the previous energy interval. So at that time you may decide to split the neutron into a number of neutron histories. Uh, the same you can apply also to the angular dependence. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.